Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to November's Layer 7 Office Hours. We appreciate you showing up. I'm going to turn this over to Gary in just one second, but this session is being recorded and will be available later on today or early tomorrow morning up on our community website. And with that in mind, Gary, take it away. Thanks, Bill. Hey, thanks everyone for joining. Um, so today we're going to take a look at the second session of Zero to Cloud Hero. And um, what we're going to be covering today is an introduction to Helm and the Gateway Helm chart. The content today is going to be is going to be fairly high level. We're not going to go into any advanced topics for the time being. Um, we will cover that in subsequent sessions as we progress throughout the series. So we'll start with a recap of the previous session. I'll just do that now. So in the first session, we covered uh, deploying the gateway using um, simple Docker compose file, a Docker run command, and using um, Kubernetes with some raw um, YAML files of a deployment and a service. So we're going to further th we're going to further that today um, by talking about the current supported medium for deploying the gateway into Kubernetes, which is the gateway Helm chart. Uh, before we do that, we'll take a look at what Helm is, and we'll also taking a look. We'll, we'll also take a look at creating and installing a Helm chart from scratch. Um, with that, we'll cover the anatomy of a Helm chart, what you get, um, or what we'll get when we go through that process. And I'll also show you some useful Helm commands that you can run to roll back um, to to get values from a release, and so on and so forth. Um, we'll then take a look at the gateway Helm chart. I'll give you an overview of, an overview of that, and we'll then go through installing, upgrading, and uninstalling um, the processes that you follow for that. And we can also um, go into some tips that you might use um, while you're going through that process as well. So Helm, um, simply put, is a Kubernetes package manager. Um, a chart is a Helm package um, that contains all of the necessary um, resource definitions, Kubernetes manifests, um, to run an application tool or service inside of Kubernetes. And that, in our context today, um, that's going to be the sample um, that we put forward or the sample that we create. Um, and later on, it'll be the gateway. Um, a repository. Um, is where those um, is where those charts can be um, collected and shared. So we have a layer seven repository, and I'll show you how to go about um, adding that using Helm. A release is an instance of a chart running in a Kubernetes cluster. So releases are separated by release name, and what that means is that you can have multiple releases of, say, a gateway chart running in the same namespace in the same cluster, and all of the resources are going to be separate um, based on that release name. So you don't have um, so you don't have uh, so you don't have conflicts between different um, different gateway clusters and so on. <clears throat> so the Helm chart that we're going to create today is something just called Office Hours. We'll actually go through the commands that you use to create this, and we'll also customize it so that we can deploy it. Um, this is the structure that you're going to get from that. is a folder called Office Hours, and um, there's going to be a there's going to be charts, templates, and a couple of additional files that we'll investigate right now. So templates contain a set of, um, of Kubernetes manifests. You'll see on the, um, on the image here, there's um, some syntax that's specific to, that, some, some syntax that is specific to Helm. So um, this is sort of if-else language, and that allows you to have a values file, um, have a values file and pass in custom, um, custom inputs, and those inputs lead to different things being created in the ending results, which is going to be a Kubernetes manifest. The chart.yaml <coughs> is kind of a descriptor of what the chart is, and, um, and it allows you to specify what it does. It also allows you, as we'll see with the gateway chart, to include dependencies. So you might want to include um, additional, uh, additional charts or subcharts in the, um, in the deployment of the chart. A good example of that would be the gateway chart and something like MySQL. Um, where you can include that um, sort of option. And we'll take a look at that um, later on. And finally, the values file. So this values file is the only thing that you'll need to change when deploying um, a, um, a Helm chart from a vendor um, such as us. And um, that will go into templates. It will um, sort of values and so on will be selected. And the ending, the ending result will be a set of Kubernetes valid manifests that will go into Kubernetes. So, a packaged Helm chart. A packaged Helm chart is the end result of what we'll be actually deploying uh, when we deploy the gateway Helm chart later on. Um, to package a chart, as we'll do in the demonstration as well, you simply run Helm package office hours, um, which is going to be the name of our chart, and that will package um, 
and that will package all of the dependencies, all of the templates into a single file, and we can use that to deploy um, a Helm chart into Kubernetes. The myValues.yaml that you can see on the left there, um, that represents an override file. So there are default values that get assigned to every Helm chart, and if we want to override that or change that, um, then we can create a custom um, values file and put our own um, values into that. The ending result of that is a customized Kubernetes uh, set of Kubernetes manifests that will go into Kubernetes. Um, so, quickly, so we'll quickly go into actually creating that uh, that sample Helm chart. And um, let me just make this a tiny bit bigger so, we can, so everyone can see. So the first thing that we'll do is run Helm create office hours. So this is going to simply create um, a kind of um, a skeleton of a Helm chart for us. And that's done, and we've now got this folder structure. So by default here, we have um, a chart.yaml. It has the name of our chart, it has a description, and it also has the type of Helm chart that we're creating along with a version and an app version. So in order to, um, to, to use this, we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to update a couple of things. So the first thing we'll do is create a copy of the office hours values.yaml, which is the values here. Um, we can see by default, there's quite a bit of information that gets created or um, populated into this, but we, want, but we want to sort of override that. So what we're going to do is run that copy command, and we'll start with an empty um, set of things that we'll look at overriding just now. Um, oh, sorry, the file already exists. Um, so we can just copy that. Um, I copied the wrong, copied the wrong command. Sorry about that. And we've now got, um, and we've now got a values to YAML file. So we don't necessarily need to change everything in this. We're going to be changing a specific set of things in this. So let's empty this file, or empty most of it. Actually, we'll empty all of it, and head over to the things that we actually want to customize in this. So. We're going to be targeting a different image for this, which is going to be a mock, um, a mock service that has um, some basic API endpoints on it. We're going to be changing the repository and the, um, and the tag that's present there. If I go back into that file, all I have to do is paste that in. And that's going to override the default image that we'll be using for this, um, for this Helm chart. The next thing that we're going to do is update the service type. So we want to be able to access this, um, this service in the outside world. So we're going to change its service type from, uh, from cluster IP, which is the default. We'll change that to load balancer and we'll expose port 8080 on that. So that's, um, that's done. And finally, the next thing that we'll do, we need to expose this, um, we need to expose this from a deployment perspective on a different port. The default is 8080. So we're just, we are um, just going to need to change that. We're also going to change the liveness probe and the readiness probe. Um, this path needs to return a 200 for the container to register as healthy in Kubernetes. So we're just going to take this configuration. I went, I'm now going to go into the templates folder to our deployment.yaml. And we're going to head down to the section there. And we're just going to copy over um, the configuration that we just looked at directly there. Or actually, let's just change. So we'll copy that across. And we'll just move that into the correct place. All right, so that's done. So this chart should now be ready to, um, so this chart should, should now be ready to install. What we can do is run Helm package. So what Helm package will do is it'll package everything that's in this folder here into a TGZ file. And we can then override that with a um, we can then override that with a values.yaml file. So if you run the Helm package command, we can see that we get um, a package of this. And this is the way that you would deploy the, the gateway Helm chart from the remote repository that we'll take at um, that we'll take a look at a little bit later. To install our um, to install our mock chart that we just created for Office Hours, um, <clears throat> we're going to basically do Helm install mock. We're going to pass in the my values.yaml with the F flag, and we're going to be targeting the office hours, um, the office hours folder here. So we'll do that locally. 
the mock is going to be the release name. So if you wanted to have mock one, mock two, um, then we could specify that with this release name here. I'm just going to go ahead and install that. And we now have um, our mock Helm chart um, that's been deployed into Kubernetes. So to confirm that it has been uh, to confirm that it's been deployed into Kubernetes successfully, we can run Helm list, and we can see that we've got um, the mock release that's been deployed into our namespace, which is Office Hours, and it's currently at revision one and it's been deployed. We can confirm that everything's up and running as we expect by running kubectl get parts. And we can see we've got the mock image that we specified up and running and ready to start receiving connections. So we now want to access this. So we can run kubectl get SPC. We changed the service type to load balancer. So we'll need to grab that, um, that external IP because we'll be testing the service shortly. Um, to grab that, we can run kubectl get SPC. And um, I'm just going to run this command here. We're just going to export that public IP address as a um, as an environment variable. So that's done there. And we can export that. We're going to grab the um, external IP back when we do that. So that matches the external IP there. And then finally, we can run through a test of that. So we'll curl. We'll go to the service IP. We'll go to 8080, which is the port that we exposed. And we'll go to a shipping endpoint, which is there, and we get a response back. So in the space of so in the space of about five minutes, we've gone from creating a um, a very simple Helm chart to actually deploying that into Kubernetes and um, accessing it via the service. So there's a couple of things that we might want to do um, from this. So let's say that we've deployed this and um, we've lost the my values the YAML file. So um, it's on a different system. We're not sure it's applied to it. If we want to grab that, what we can do is uh, what we can do is Helm get values, and we pass in the release name. So Helm get values for Mark, and we can see that we supplied these image. Uh, we can see that we supplied these values. So we changed the image, and we changed the service. If we want to show the values for the default values for the um, for the office hours chart. We can run Helm show values, and we just pass in the location of the chart. And that should give us all of the default values that we can, um, that we can pass in. So this is really useful if you're looking at um, the differences between different versions of a Helm chart. Um, you, can view the, you can view the default values, and you can, do, you can do a diff on things that may have changed uh, between the version that you're currently running and the, the latest version that's available. If we want to go through an upgrade of the chart, um, instead of running install, we can just run um, Helm upgrade. Uh, we pass in the release name, mm -hmm. we pass in our same values to YAML, and we pass in the target, which is going to be that office sales chart. Um, so let's quickly change something to my values to YAML. What we might do is set something like replicas. We'll change that to two. Um, and we can simply run that Helm <clears throat> upgrade command. And our release has been updated. What's also been updated is this revision number here. So if I run Helm list again, I can see that um, the, the update's gone through, and we're now running at revision 2. And if I do kubectl get parts again, then OK, my um, Replicas haven't been updated, but that's okay. Uh, so let's say something's gone wrong then, and I want to roll back to a previous version. I can do Helm roll back mark, and all I've got to do is pass in the revision number that I want to roll back to. So I want to go back to re revision one, and uh, the configuration has been rolled back to configuration one now. And the revision has been incremented to three because it's gone forward. By um, by applying the revision um, by applying the revision one, but we're back at revision one um, of our deployment, so we've successfully rolled back to that previous version. And finally, to uninstall our Helm chart, all we have to do is run Helm install mark Helm uninstall mark, and the mark release has been uninstalled. If we run Helm list again, then um, then the release has been successfully removed. 
So before I move into the gateway Helm chart, are there any questions on that? Okay. So the gateway Helm chart is a little bit more complex than the sample Helm chart that we just created. Um, well, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're not going to be going through an exhaustive list of all of the different things that you can do with the gateway Helm chart, along with um, all of the um, configuration options that you might choose. We will be covering that in a session in the future, so more advanced use cases um, that you might want to do with the, with the gateway Helm chart. For the time being, we're just going to go through a simple, a simple install guide. Um, before we do that, we'll take a look at some of the templates in the Gateway Helm chart. So what I've done is downloaded the Gateway Helm chart um, from, um, from the API Management Charts repository. And we can see here the folder structure is much the same as our standard office hours with a couple of exceptions. So we have charts here um, with some additional TGZ files. These represent subcharts in the gateway, and I can show you where those are configured shortly. We also have um, we also have files. So if you want to include additional files, um, we have that for the Grafana dashboard as a as a default example. There's um, some functionality for bundles there as well that we use in the gateway Helm chart as well. And we also have all of the templates. And we have quite a few more than what you would get with um, with the default um, with the default Helm chart. Um, if you created it. So we're not going to go into too much detail into what each of these is or does. Um, but yeah, just, just, just sort of bear in mind that um, there is a lot more that you can do with the gateway Helm chart than you would do um, with, a standard, uh, with a standard Helm chart. So in, terms of the, um, so in terms of the chart file and dependencies, so this chart folder is populated with some additional subcharts. We include those as dependencies in the gateway Helm chart in chart.yaml, and that basically tells us um, the additional things that we could deploy as part of um, as part of this gateway Helm chart. So we have Hazelcast, um, InfluxDB, Grafana, and MySQL, and they all have conditions. These conditions relate to values that are set in the values.yaml file. So for deploying the MySQL database, there's database.create. If that's set to true, then MySQL as a subchart is deployed along with the gateway chart. And the same is true for Grafana, InfluxDB, and Hazelcast with their own respective conditions um, for deployment as well. <clears throat> um, so that kind of covers the subcharts. Uh, by default, the gateway Helm chart comes with MySQL enabled. This is not something that we have as a production, um, as a production option. Um, so this is purely for development to testing. Um, if you are looking at deploying gateway Helm chart into a production environment, then using a using an external MySQL database is the best way to, to go about doing that. In terms of in terms of installing the layer seven chart, there's a couple of commands that will run. Um, the first one's going to be um, adding the layer seven repository. Um, so to do that we're just going to run Helm repo add. Um, so I'm just going to Close that. So Helm repo add layer seven and um, layer seven. And this endpoint here is the location of the um, is the location of the chart repository. So the so the chart repository contains an index.yaml file, and that index.yaml uh, that index.yaml file is basically what tells Helm which charts are available and where to go to download them. So if I go to this endpoint here in a browser. Um, if I go to this endpoint here in a browser, and I type in index.yaml, I'm going to get a file back that has all of the entries that we have um, for APIM charts um, in the APIM charts repository, uh, along with locations of where to download <coughs> CGZ files. Um, so I can I can also search that by running Helm search repo, and I can type in the repository name, so layer seven, and that's going to show us all of the different charts that are available in that um, in that remote repository. So the next thing that we that we want to do is run Helm repo update. 
this is going to go to the um, this is going to go to the Helm repository and it's going to grab the latest versions um, of that index file so that we have them available um, when deploying our gateway. So if you haven't run um, so if you haven't um, so if you haven't installed a Helm chart on a system in a while, then running Helm repo update is always going to give you the latest version of whichever chart you're going to be deploying. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually install the gateway into this environment. Um, for that, we're going to run Helm install um, SSG, which is going to be our release name, and we're going to be adding in a, um, a license value. So this is going to be a gateway 10.x license, 10.x license, and we're going to be accepting the license conditions. And finally, we'll be um, and finally we'll be targeting the layer seven repository, and we'll be targeting the gateway chart in that. And that's now been um, and that's now been deployed into Kubernetes. And I can grab the service by running this command here. Um, by default, there is um, by default for this demonstration, both of these are going to be external IP addresses. Uh, so we should be able to access both of those. So in terms of the services that are deployed here, there's a couple of them that you'll see. So if I run kubectl get pods now, um, you can see that we've got um, SSG Gateway, which is going to be our gateway application. We've also got this SSG Gateway PM type in, and we've got SSG MySQL, which is the default or demo database. So PM Tiger is basically a service that allows you to have a stateful connection into Policy Manager. We'll go into um, in the next session more advanced use cases on um, how you can configure um, how you can configure um, access to things like Policy Manager um, from internal networks only while also serving traffic on um, external ports. So that gateway is now being um, that gateway is now being installed, um, and it should be up and running in the next couple of minutes. Yeah. So what we'll do is just a watch here, and we'll wait for that to, to sort of get to an up and running state. So with this demo, is <laughs> sorry, is there a question? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, Gary, you might want to mention that obviously when you do this and you have two external IPs, that does cost you a bit more on on your resources. Let's say if you're an AWS or something, then that costs you for two external IPs rather than just one. Yes, that's right. Um, so from so from a running perspective, there are various ways that you can deploy the gateway Helm chart. Um, if you were looking at some, you know, so sort of next steps. Um, exposing the gateway would be done via internal load balancers. So you would have an internal load balancer that would be available in AWS, Azure, um, GCP, um, so that you can access the gateway internally um, fr from the internal network, but not access that like policy manager from the outside world externally. So you wouldn't have necessarily a public IP address um, on the management service at all. And um, from a gateway service perspective, uh, and from a gateway service perspective, um, you just have that single service, um, so, so it's going to the outside world. So, the next thing that we might want to do is um, is an update to the um, is an update to the gateway Helm chart. So at the moment we've used the default value, so we haven't passed in any additional values to um, to install the to install the gateway Helm chart. To get the default values from the gateway Helm chart, we can simply run um, so Helm show values. Layer seven gateway. And we can output that to gateway values YAML. And we've now got the default values for the gateway Helm chart. Um, so what we might do is something like update the replicas to two, and we'll then run the upgrade. So we'll upgrade that same release. And yeah. um, the only change that we'll make to this is we will add in the, um, the gateway values to YAML file, which is great. 
And now what should happen in the background is we should now have uh, an additional gateway node that gets added to that. So deployment's been upgraded and for example, kubectl get pods and we should see an additional gateway pod um, coming up. So if we want to roll back that, we can just run. Um, so again, I'll roll back SSG and we know that we're on a second revision because we've done one upgrade. So we can roll back to the first revision. And roll back to success. And if we do get pods, then that second gateway is not being moved. So finally, uh, uh, we want to uninstall gateway now and uh, finish with it. Simply run home, home and install SSG, and that's going to remove the gateway. It's also going to remove the MySQL. Uh, the only thing that's going to remain in this environment is the persistent volume plane for. SQL, which we'll need to remove, um, which we'll need to remove manually. If we now run get all, then we can see that the um, that the gateway pod is um, is is being removed. So with that, I've given you a very quick introduction to Helm, um, to the anatomy of Helm charts. Um, a very quick. And, um, a very quick intro into the different commands that you can use to administer the gateway um, using Helm. And as I said, this is a very, very simple intro um, for this session. And in subsequent sessions, we'll look at going into more advanced use cases and um, get more in depth with the different things that you can do, different architectures that you can look at, uh, that you that you can look at creating, and so on. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, uh, so uh, my question is about deploying bundles. I think uh, there are two options, either you can bootstrap or you can create a derived image. And it looks like what you did here is you used a derived image, is that right? Um, so in the context of today, I, I, I didn't add any additional bundles to the gateway. So this is using the, um, this is using the default image, yeah. But you do have some services installed in there that you tested, like shipping? Oh, um, so in the first example, I was using a um, a, a mock image. So this image has um, so this so this image is a is a separate server that has some services on it. Uh, okay, so so when you I mean like you you pulled that image from your repository and it contained a bundle in it. Is isn't that right? Um, so, so this image here is not is not a gateway. So this is just a um, like a like a mock server that turns some oh, responses. Oh, understood. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So, so in terms of in terms of creating in terms of bootstrapping bundles, um, so you're you're right. There are there are currently three methods to do that though. So the first is by creating a derived image. Uh, where you can include those bundles into the, well, there's actually a few ways, where you can include those bundles into the Gateway's bootstrap folder. Um, there's also the option of mounting um, existing uh, config maps. Um, so if I go into the values file here, so you can specify existing bundles, and these can come in the form of config maps or sequence. You can also use the Kubernetes sequence or CSI driver to mount those. And these go to the um, and these go to the bootstrap folder on the gateway. So that's kind of the second option. Um, there's also this option here where you can add in bundles. If you download the the API M charts, you can include bundles here. Um, I wouldn't recommend this option, um, but it is it is there if you have a really small bundle that you'd like to just load in. Um, the alternative is using init containers. And um, as of gateway chart 3.0.2, this is going to form part of one of the more advanced use cases. Um, but within the containers, you can include um, you can include, let's say, a config folder that may have bundles in it, and the gateway has a mechanism to to pick up that fault um, to, to pick up that folder and load it into the correct bootstrap place, so that you don't have to go um, and create a derived image for bundles, for custom assertions, for multiple assertions, um, and so on.
Thank you. And I was wondering, um, maybe in uh, a future session, if you could cover uh, the performance of these, like with uh, with relation to starting up the Kubernetes pod, which of these options uh, has the best performance? Yeah, sure. Um, I think in terms of performance, um, so this so this gateway did take a while to start. The reason for that is because the uh, the, the database didn't already exist. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're targeting an existing SSG database, then connecting to that is going to be, um, is going to be much faster, um, uh, for a sort of fresh gateway. Um, the timing is going to depend on the additional policies and services that you have in the gateway. So if you have, um, you know, hundreds of APIs or thousands of APIs stored in your database, the gateway part is going to need to get those out of the database and, um, that process is going to take sort of varying amounts of time dependent on how big those policies are and the complexity in them. Okay, thank you. No problem. Hey Gary, uh, this is Kaushik. Uh, I have a question. So for the Helm chart installation, uh, is a license mandatory? Like let's say if I want, if I want to do it in local, uh, is there any way I can disable the license or accept set to false and can, can still start the gateway um so the license so the license is required um in any in any context mm -hmm. um it doesn't necessarily so, so we don't have um you know any kind of mandates on like production licenses or dev licenses um in terms of you know what the gateway checks mm -hmm. um, so there's no external check to, to validate a license it's all done on the gateway itself um and you can also use um, you can also use existing secrets. But if I if I did, for example, at home, so if I did um, we go back to the install command, mm -hmm. and I set accept the false, then it's mm -hmm. going to give me an error message saying that I need to accept the license. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, oh, uh, sorry. That's because passing oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the gateway the gateway is going to give an error saying that. Um, Mm -hmm. The license hasn't been accepted. Yeah, so you can see there, there's a there's yeah. a have to be back off now because the license has to be accepted um, to use the to use the gateway help chart. Okay, so if even if I were to uh, spin up a cluster and uh, test the gateway in my local machine, I need a license, a valid license, uh, to spin up the gateway and test it. Yes, that's right. Um, so what you can do if, um, if you know, if you don't want to have this, um, you know, this command with set, set license, uh, set license value, you can create a secret in Kubernetes that yes. contains the license, and mm -hmm. then you can just reference that for your local development. So you don't have to, you know, have this license file every single time you, you know, want to test the gateway, you just reference, uh, the, yeah. the existing secret. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. That, uh, that's the approach I'm doing, but I just want to make sure we can default, uh, or not to pass the license. For the local machines, but yeah, makes sense. Thank you. No problem. Uh, hey, Gary, this is Ravi. Uh, is MySQL required? Can we run gateways without uh, databases, container gateways? Is it possible? Uh, yes. Um, so, so, absolutely, you can run the, the gateway without an external MySQL. So, um, we call that a ephemeral mode. So the gateway container has a built-in Derby database. So you do get um, local file persistence, but as soon as the container gateway is restarted, then any policies that you may have developed um, will be removed. So um, that mode works best when you have a set of bundles. Um, so RESTman bundles, um, or you're administering, gate um, administering gateways through, so um, RESTman at the moment, but Craftman in the future. Um, but, but yeah, that, that's absolutely possible. Although, um, there will be some things that you won't get from, um, there will be some limitations in terms of what you're able to do. For example, um, you know, when looking at stuff like rate limiting, um, rate limiting requires, uh, rate limiting requires, uh, for cluster wide, um, rate limits, it, it requires access to a cluster info table on the SSG database. So it makes division by one versus the number of nodes in a cluster. So there are some there are some feature limitations in that, um, and obviously you're not going to be um, you're not going to be you know accessing those gateways with um, so rest and graphman directly. Um, it's going to be a, a sort of one to one basis. So there are some limitations, but it, it is absolutely possible, and 
uh, we will also be um, publishing more examples in the future of ephemeral use cases and how to administer gateways in that manner. Thank you. And apologies for the for the background noise on my end if there is some. Are there any additional questions? They don't need to be about you know this presentation. They could be sort of about anything um, related to layer seven in general. Sounds like we're done for the day. Thank you very much, Gary. Appreciate that. And um, for everybody else, again, this session will be available this afternoon um, or tomorrow morning on the community site. And next month's session will be December 15th. Not a lot of runway here, but I wanted to make you aware of it. We should have the registration up by the um, end of November is our goal. Um, so that you'll be able to register for the December 15th session. So thank you very much again, and we look forward to seeing you next month.